Mike Tippin and Mark Davis. All right. All right, we're here. We're here. Okay, For so. For a second time. <laughs> yeah, there's always something. So, we are live. We're good to go. We confirmed? Okay, yeah. sorry. The minute that we weren't live. So, episode nine. Yep. Um, we are going to have a guest on tonight. We are. I'm excited um, we'll about this guest. Discuss something that we haven't discussed yet, really, on the podcast that yep. I'm aware of. Um, let's see. Anything interesting come up? Anything you did? Anything going on? Had a good weekend fishing did with Allie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I saw some videos of that. Yep. Got some, chiggers. That's some bass. Yeah, that's not. That's that's never fun. <laughs> that was terrible. But uh, she destroyed them, man. I mean, she just she killed. Like we were talking about before earlier. Yeah. We spent a lot of time launching the e-commerce website um, for the store. Uh, I was gonna have a whole link made so everybody could watch it and see it, and but uh, didn't get it done in time. Completely forgot about it today. Got really sidetracked doing gunsmithing work, so oh. wound up working on like twenty two guns today, which was unexpected. Today's was by Friday off, and. Uh, I wound up coming here at 10 and work until probably about five minutes ago before we started. Yeah, you this. did. You were jumping in right here, right? It's, so at the, the very so last minute in, so. to get this done. So luckily I got my stuff done today. Yeah. But That's what pays the bills, right? Yeah, really nothing uh, nothing too interesting. Like I said, um, the online site is is live. If you want to check that out, you go to our regular website, uh, right. www.davisgunsinger.com. There's only two our e-commerce site. Uh, pretty neat. A lot of stuff on there that we list. Yep. Some of the stuff is drop shipped, of course. Uh, I would tell them the biggest thing right now is that we have all the ammo on there. Yeah, um, we don't mark the prices up, but then there's a 15 percent off coupon that we have right. too that's attached right now, so you can have that drop shipped to your house if you wanted to. Right. Um, but also, if it comes to store, it's it doesn't charge anything for like shipping because it's oh, that's cool. the house. Yeah. So for us, a lot of times we have a hard time getting ammo in the store because it sells so fast. Now right. it's kind of like you can you can preclaim what you want. Yeah, you know I like that. Bottom line as long as they got it in stock, you know, in stock, you can get it here. So yeah, because cool. it it definitely it. becomes very complicated for us to get. Get a lot of the ammo in. So. Yeah. Well, that's hard to keep on stock of everything. You do an okay job. Well, it's that's, like I've said before, it's a, lo- a lot of places, especially with the economy, the way it is, you know, everything's in, in short supply. Yeah. Um, a lot of shops were just, you know, gouging prices. Of ammo oh, yeah. Stuff like it's that. insane. And we never did. We just kept the prices basically what they were. I mean, we're still making profits. So why, you know, why? Why kill people for it's it? It's like when we were talking about cars in the day where they're marking cars, you know, thirty, forty thousand dollars over Jesus. the thing. Yeah. It's it's all the same kind of business to me, and I think it's bad business practice. I agree. So we, we never did it. But on the downside with that is that people go, Oh, they never have anything because it sells out so fast when it comes in. So oh, yeah. it's a double edged sword, like all those things are, you know. But yeah. it's it's a it's a weird industry to be in, you know. Yeah. You never know what's gonna happen. So at least you're not gonna take advantage of folks. So I try not to. I'll take care of that. You know, yeah, what I, I, mean? I, I like that. I like I like that fact. So as as much as possible, you know, and yeah, we got to keep the uh, the small businesses going. Not only just ours because it's us, but yeah, everything in general. It it, it really does affect the uh, for sure the area you live in. Um, but with that being said, no, I really didn't didn't have too much interesting going on um, this week. Too much stuff, you know. We got uh, we got some subscribers to YouTube. We did, and it was really weird because we keep following. So all of our other platforms. We have a good amount of followers. Right. For some reason, and I've never done a YouTube channel before, so it's really, maybe that's it's just lack of understanding what we're doing. Sure. We cannot seem to break that 100 mark. Nope. We are we're in the close. 90s. We're, we're sitting like there. 92. Trying 90. to give, yeah, so. give away stuff as much as I can, and, and people just aren't following through. But yeah. um, I thought we were going to hit it this week. I thought we were going to hit the 100 so for too, sure. But, but we yeah, didn't. We haven't yet. Tell we'll your friends. That. I don't know. Get out there. You want to. Yeah, like, subscribe. We'll, what is it? Yeah. We'll post a video, and we'll get like a, a reel. Like a small little snippet, we'll get like you know four thousand views on it. Yeah, like, how does this? So I don't know. It's it's all complicated to me. But we're being rude to our guest. Yeah. So what I'll talk about is that we we do have somebody on today. Um, we'll keep <laughs> we'll just do what we've been doing. Let's keep bringing people on that are controversial. So um, <laughs> what we're going to bring on today is uh, Peter Dalton. He is a licensed nuisance trapper. Right. So he. Does trapping, which of course has a lot of a lot of different feedback on top of that, but he does it on the level of uh, doing it for people. So not just for yep. him for sport too, but for you know issues you if you were a person that had a problem and you right. needed uh, you know some pests taken care of, we'll call them pests, I guess. Right. Um, well, he has to go through DWR for that. Well, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll have permit him for that. Explain so. all that in a minute. Yeah. But yeah, so he's actually you know a, a, a true you know trapper by trade. Um, so. When we talk about this, we're going to discuss a lot of these things, but it's like the bow fishing thing. A lot of people have negative thoughts and views on it. So 
the best part about this is we're going to have Peter on here, and he can actually kind of clear up some of the misconceptions right. and understandings of we can communicate. The, the, That's what it's about. The blood sport that everybody thinks oh, it God, is. So, it's um, if we want to jump in, Peter, you want to just go ahead and uh, introduce yourself real quick. Yeah, thanks, guys. Uh, Peter Dalton, uh, like you said, I'm a I'm a trapper. Uh, I do God hunt. And, I do hunt and fish uh, as well, but really uh, caught the trapping bug, and uh, you know, just uh, based here in Percival, Virginia, and. You know, mainly serve, you know, Hamilton, Leesburg, um, you know, Percival, Middleburg, you know, Loudoun County pretty much. That's cool. Yep. Now, so I'm excited. I, I know I, I know nothing. We talked a little bit before, but right. I know nothing about trapping. It's, I think it's unique. I think it's, you know, something that, you know, from a hunting perspective, it's, you know, I, I think it's a necessary thing. You know, people have used trapping, you know, that's kind of what settled, you know, Hudson River, yeah, Hudson right. Bay, all that stuff. You know, the history behind it's amazing. Um, some good, some not so good, but I I I think you get a bad rap. Um yeah. and I think it has a lot to do with, you know, a couple of little things, a couple of big things. You know, you grow up with cartoons and, you know, Elmer Fudd and, you know, the the hunters and the big ass, you know, bear traps and whatever. Right. So tell us about it. You know, what 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 do you do? Why do you do it? Why do you like it? You know, I know that's kind of three questions back to back, but start wherever you want. Yeah. So, so I guess I'll start with like how I got into it. And um, <clears throat> so I I got into predator hunting first okay. um, and I was absolutely terrible at it. Um, <laughs> I, I could um, I could call I could call fox in all day. Uh, we just we don't have a huge coyote population here. So, you know, you call one in every once in a while. But um, and, you know, I, I was, uh, you know, talking to me about it and I was, I got on, I got online and I found, you know, raccoon traps, a, a dog proof trap. Basically it's, it's, cust- it's, you know, made for a raccoon. You can pretty much only catch like a raccoon or a possum cause they have to reach into the tube and pull the lever. So it's a good nuisance trap too, because you can't catch dogs and, you know, cats and everything else. But I bought a bunch of those and I went to my buddy's farm during trapping season and I put them all in a Creek. Uh, bottom because I saw raccoon tracks and I caught my first raccoon. Yeah. And ever since then, it's just been all downhill from there. Now <laughs> I got a shed filled with more traps than I can even look at. And, you know, I just basically dove head first into the world of trapping and it's been, it's been awesome. That's cool. Now, how long have you been doing this? Oh man, I want to say four years, maybe right. five. Yeah. And uh, how did you learn this? Uh, I, I taught myself, you know, self-taught. I like self-taught. This. So I was just on YouTube, um, doing everything, you know, my neighbor, he helped me a little bit because he had run a trap line when he was a kid. Right. Um, and so, you know, he helped me, you know, a lot, um, with like betting the trap and then he showed me how to skin my first Fox. Um, so that, that really helped, you know, but that just kind of spurred me onwards, you know? And so it was really just a lot of, uh, YouTube and trial and error, gotcha. you know, I got you and kind of figure out what works, what doesn't work. That's and right. Still learning. Yeah. Right? So that's awesome. Um, so, all right, I'm going to, there, there's a couple of things people say, Oh, it's not humane. It's a, you, um, uh, you got to get into it. I yeah. Mean, yeah. So, you know, it, it's, I think, you know, I don't know what to think. I'm, I mean, again, I'm not, I'm right. not educated in this. So help me understand why it is that you do what you do, why yep. it's, why it's something that, you know, is or isn't humane. I mean, I, sure. I'm, I'm really interested in this. So, so I think why I do it, um, you know, it's funny. A lot of trappers say it's like a Christmas morning when you go out on the trap line every day because you never know what you're going to catch. And right. there's some truth to that. You know, a, a lot of it is, you know, because if you set a foothold, in a good location, you could have a fox, you could have a coyote, you could have a bobcat, you know, um, you don't know what you're going to get. But, you know, obviously, hunting a mature whitetail, you know, you, there, there's a lot that goes into that. But with trapping, you have to know, you know, where they're feeding, you know, their their, their habits, their, their travel ways, like all of that comes into play. So I think it's just putting the pieces of the puzzle together. And it's a challenge because yep. I get bored easily. And trapping is a challenge. Like it's just it's it's hard work. It's challenging, and that's what makes it a, a lot of fun. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, it's fantastic. And uh, now, in that same notion, um, what you know, obviously, you know, different. You bait different traps. You got different things that right. for for different reasons, and you, you you have them a certain way. I I, I get that, but different. Uh, you know, you you mentioned there was one type of trap. Tell us a little bit more about the different types of traps. Sure, you know, to kind of go into 
why you would use certain ones, things like that. Yeah. So I think the biggest thing that people need to understand is it's not a one size fits all. I think a lot of people think that you take a, a, a giant trap, you put it down in a field or a trail, you put a piece of meat on it, the animal steps in, it snaps their leg and, and you're just this basically like terrorist running around, like laying traps in the woods. You know, right. it's not like that at all. Trapping is, is extremely precise. Um, and the trap that you're using is based for that animal. So there's different sizes. So when you get into the traps, for example, there's body grip traps and there's a bunch of different brands, you, you know, everyone calls them Conor Bears, but there's, there's, you know, there's Dukes, there's, I mean, there's a bunch of different brands out there, but there's a body grip trap and it's a very humane trap. It's, it's, the animal is dead on impact. I call it a giant mouse trap when I'm explaining it to my customers, but you put it, in a travel way, you can put it on a log, you can put it over the den hole, they go through, it trips the trigger, and then net catch, and it's game over, right? Gotcha. But you're not going to use, like, a mink or a muskrat trap that is, you know, I don't know, I think they're, like, four inches, you know, five inches by five inches, whatever. They're, they're really small. You're not going to use that for a beaver, Makes you know? Sense, yeah. And so the, the same thing is true. Like you're not going to use a, a, a small trap for, for like a, a, a bigger animal like a coyote. So the, the big thing is making sure that the trap you're using is targeting the animal that you're going after. Sure. And that reduces a lot of problems, I guess you could say, on your part. And, and, and it makes it a lot more humane for that animal too. So, gotcha. Makes good sense. So there's, yeah, there's different sizes. Like if you take a body grip trap, like there's there's 110s, which are smaller traps, and then there's 160s, 180s, 220s, and it goes up to 330. 330 can be used for, you know, like beaver, for example. Gotcha. Just because it's a larger animal, so you need the larger trap. Gotcha. Um, and then, of course, then it all goes into how you can use them, you know. And, and I always say, like, trapping, there's so many laws and regulations surrounding trapping now that I don't think people realize – how much actually goes into it. Yeah. I was reading a little bit about it for this podcast and there's, there's a significant amount of regulation. How you, how often you have to check your traps. Yes. It's, it's gotta be tagged, all this other stuff. I mean, Correct. there's a lot that goes into that. A lot. So, um, but you know, it's interesting and you know, um, along those same lines, you know, I guess my, you know, <laughs> 22 is my preferred method. Gotcha. You know, I, that's just quick. It's humane. Um, there are other methods that are that are legal and, and work just as well. Um, but I, I like a 22, you know, to the right. head. Um, that's the biggest thing I probably struggled with when I first started trapping. Because when you're in a deer stand or you're sitting on the ground and that gobbler comes up or that deer walks under your deer stand, they're, they're like in motion, they have free will and they can, they can go, you can miss, you know, a branch could get in the way. There's a lot of factors in hunting that goes into that, but they're, they're freely walking through the woods. Sure. When you trap an animal, you walk up to it and you are staring it yep. right in the eye, you yep. know? And so the, you know, it's a very, um, I would almost say like humbling experience. Cause you know, you caught them, you know, they can't go anywhere. And right. so it's just like, I, I really think it makes you appreciate the animal and like what you're doing, sure. you know, when you do it. So sure, sure. that's kind of my experience with it. And, uh, so Mark, uh, I see you got some questions going on. I was just scribbling stuff while I was, I was thinking about it. Yeah. Um, so it's, so this kind of recaps what you guys went over a little bit, but it's a little more narrowized. Sure. Narrowized being a fake, <laughs> fake word. I fake guess, word. You know? <laughs> Narrowizing, meaning to narrow down the discussion. Um, <laughs> right. I used it in a sentence, too. <laughs> Don't ask me to spell it. I can't spell. Uh, word um, is, if you know what it means. Everybody that's all that matters. Is word, Let's, so. We go back to cartoonish kind of stuff. Right. And what do you always see? Yeah. Here's this little rabbit going in this giant, you know, bear trap slam yeah. shut on him. Yeah. I mean, do those traps even exist anymore, the things we're talking about with, like, no. sharp, jagged edges no. and, and all that kind of stuff? Is it, it, it's... It's so highly regulated and, you know, it's the, like I said that before it almost, they used to almost use the biggest trap they could because it gave them like the, the biggest surface area to catch the animal, you know, okay. and, and now, you know, we're using traps and I've done this before too. I, I had to go to, um, I, I went and there were several landowners that got together and I was going to trap the land and I met them and, and you'll see it on YouTube and it's more of a party trick than anything, but guys will literally set a coyote trap and stick their hand in it. And, and I've done that, you know, and, and it's just to show that, like, it's not breaking any bones. It's right. not doing any damage. The jaws are smooth. You know, the, the, the surface area 
of of the trap. There's regulations on how big of a, a trap you can use on land. You know what size trap can be. You know underwater. Like there's all that goes into it. So I think, you know, I've always said like the fox and the hound and Bambi did more damage to hunting and trapping than you know any any PETA organization possibly could. Just because everyone sees that giant, you know, the teeth. That, that's that's illegal now. You can't use a trap that has the, the teeth. You know, everything's, you know, smooth jawed and and very humane to use. So my parents were uh, antique dealers when I was, well, they, they did a lot of stuff, but part of what they did was they were antique dealers and they would come across, if you're that world of, of <laughs> antique dealing, you get a lot of like bycatch, like just a bunch of extra stuff that you don't need. Right. And I remember one point. What was that word? Bycatch. Bycatch. Okay. Bycatch. Bycatch. Like, like when you're out fishing and you catch yeah. Two or something. Yeah, yeah, I get it. We're going to get into that too. Uh, but um, <laughs> we, would, we would get bycatch and we would get um, like stuff. And one time we, we bought a bunch of traps. And I guess they were coyote traps because they were smooth. They were really like this big. Like, yeah. Yep. So big. And um, I don't know, I'm surprised my parents didn't play with them. And I would mess with them. Of course, I didn't set up the yard or anything, but I would just mess with them. And I remember slamming my hand a couple times. And being overly concerned, like it was going to be this big, like, ah, my yeah. fingers are going to break. And it never really happened. No. Now, I will say in the same world with the, the antique stuff, I have seen some of those crazy bear traps. Yeah. Were, of uh, uh, trapping for, like, fur. Yep. Um, trapping for food. You know what I mean, as well. Yep. Um, so my question is, wh- what are the majority of the guys out here trapping for? Is it mainly nuisance trapping? Is it fur trapping? Are they trapping for meals? Is it a little bit of everything? No, it's, it's mainly... It's mainly what I would say for fur. Now, everyone knows the fur market's absolutely terrible. Um, I would say fur and conservation, right? Because one of the biggest ways to increase your fawn population or your turkey population is to go out and trap those predators. You know, obviously you need the habitat and you need everything else. But, you know, if you take out a bunch of raccoons, you know, and, and nest raiders like skunks and possums, your, your turkey population is just going to explode. And, I mean, I've seen that on, you know, our farm and, and my neighbor's farm, you know. So I think... For me, honestly, like it's not, you know, I, I skin the animals and I use the fur and, I, you know, I'll make cool hats out of it or, or I'll send them off to get products made or whatever. But I think, honestly, the, 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 the biggest thing is the conservation aspect of it because trapping is dwindling, right? Nobody's really doing it anymore. There's, there's not the numbers that there used to be. And guys are like, oh, man, my, my turkeys are, you know, my turkeys are getting eaten up. It must be the coyote. It's not the coyote. It's a, it's a raccoon that you might get. 50 cents to a dollar for the pelt and no one wants to go out and put the work in and drop two dozen dog proofs on their, on their property in the dead of winter, or, or even if you can in the spring before everything hatches, but that's what you need to do to take care of your Turkey population. So yeah, there's nuisance trappers like myself, you know, but with that comes the whole regulations, the license, the insurance. So a lot of guys don't want to deal with that. And also the headache that can come with it. Um, so it's really, I would say <laughs> conservation and fur are probably the two biggest reasons that guys do it or so girls, I, I, I should know say you, too. You were telling us earlier, we were discussing about foxes and you said that you make a, a good fox pot pie with the foxes. you catch. <laughs> no, 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 but, no. So, um, <laughs> possum pot pie. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I've heard of groundhog pot pie. I've never had it. I've heard of it. <clears throat> so the question is when you do do this nuisance trapping and after you skin them, um, with the regulations being that you're nuisance trapping, are yeah. you allowed? Because like I know on like damage permit, when you're hunting, you can't keep trophies, you can't keep that's, antlers. That's correct. Like that. Yeah. So when you're damaged, uh, when you're out there doing things for nuisance trapping, yeah. I don't know if that's like a. Da- are you allowed to keep the fur? No, no, like it's that? no, it's it's the same thing. So you have to either incinerate, bury, or double bag and and landfill. Okay. Really? Yeah, yeah. That you can't you can't keep it, and you got to keep a record of you know. Customer name, address, um, you know, their phone number, the species, and the damage they were causing. So that way if the warden, you know, somebody calls in and says, hey, I saw this guy walking out of the woods with, you know, three red fox, and the warden calls you, you can be like, oh, yeah, you know, he was trapping here, they were killing chickens, or they were damaging X, you know, and that lets the warden be able to tell people, like, well, it's a licensed nuisance trapper, X, Y, Z, this is what was going on. So So what if we, let's back to bycatch. So let's say you (laughs) go you go out and I'm, I've got a chicken farm, something, I don't know. Right. And I say, hey, I've got these mink everywhere eating right. my stuff. Right. And you go, they say, cool, I'm going to go, you know, target these mink. And we catch something that has nothing to do with it whatsoever. Right. But it's a native animal. Are they kind of, I mean, is there, is there, do you ever release anything? Is that something yeah, of you course. do? I mean, do they, 
turn around and attack you. I, I, I don't. I got to imagine they're not yeah. very happy. No, they're they're stuck not in a trap. Yeah, so that's what we call a non-target catch, right? Um, and so it it, it happens. Um, you know, I, in Virginia, you can trap coyotes year round on private land. You know, and um, you know, fox. There's actually a closed season in Loudoun County unless you have a nuisance permit. So your average trapper just can't really go out unless they get permission from the landowner. You can't go out and like trap the fox. So, um, you know, I've done a lot of trapping on places where the hunt runs, right? Um, they want the coyotes gone, but they want to keep the fox for obvious reasons because that's their sport and they like to chase them. So, when I go out to these properties, you know, you'll catch a bunch of red fox and I release every single one. Um, and it's actually super cool to release them. It's a lot of fun. And like I said, you know, I, and I, I videotape it every year. I, I videotape multiple releases just to show people that like, you know, this fox is running away fine. He's not limping. His his paw isn't broken. But, yeah, so if you get that, you know, if you call me and say, hey, I want you to take out this fox that's getting into my chicken coop and I catch a raccoon, it's your call, right? I mean, you can tell me, look, I want him gone too, and as a nuisance trapper, you know, I can do that. Or if you say, no, I like the cuddly raccoon, keep him, I just want the fox dead, <laughs> then I have to release him. And no, they're, they are not very amicable when you have them in the trap. Like, they're not, they're not you know, necessarily in, in pain, but they are not happy. They've been there probably for, you know, you have to check every 24 hours, but, you know, they've been there for a little bit. They're caught. They know something isn't right. And so, and then all of a sudden here you come walking towards them with a gun or or, or, or a catch pole to release them. So you you can use a catch pole. That's my favorite method. Um, I'm just getting so, ready to ask so you. yeah, so I have a catch pole. I do use a catch pole. Um, also a five gallon bucket works great. I've gone to that with Fox too. And I got the idea from people they'll use, or they'll use like a, um, like a tub, like a tote and you just cut like a little divot out of it. You put the tub or the tote over the animal. Now they're enclosed. They're in the dark. They're surrounded. They feel safe. And they're just their paw is sticking out. Gotcha. So then you can sit on the top of the bucket or the tub, <laughs> yeah. pop the trap, then you can get up and take the tub, you know, and then off, you know, off they run. And, and thick leather gloves, I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do have a pair uh, that I, but I rarely wear them, honestly, just because you're there's so much going yeah, on. Like it, you, so. you know, the old saying, like yeah. you can't do anything with gloves, right. you know. So Absolutely. it's just one of those things where I do wear them, obviously, in the winter. But yeah, I mean, you do get non-target catches, and and you have to deal with it accordingly. So, so have you ever been bit? That's a, that was going to be my next question. <laughs> okay, so. Yes, but thank God I actually had these like Kevlar uh, gloves on. It, it was a fox. I was doing the five gallon bucket thing. Well, no, I wasn't doing the five gallon bucket thing. I had forgot my catch pole and I was trying to hold it down with like a stick basically just so I could get to the trap. And he reached yeah. over and he grabbed onto my hand. And I um, I had those gloves and um, I had just gotten them for like for Christmas, like a week prior. And I was wearing them that day and yep. that saved me because otherwise it would have been rabies shots in the whole nine. Um, but yeah, I that's the only time that I've I've gotten bit. But now Jeez. that's like when I first started to and I'm a lot wiser now on how yep. I go about it. So oh, it's about learning, right? But so. yeah, so... I knew a trapper that told me that he was trapping in a stream, and uh, he got out there and he had caught a, a blue heron. Oh Jesus! Uh, had got in the trap, and uh, he said, "Oh, I'm just gonna walk over and let it go." <laughs> and he said he went over, and that thing flogged and just beat the hell out of him yeah. in the trap. And I guess it finally got it out, but he said it was it was way way that more was an angry bird. Than yeah, him. I can imagine. They're big birds though. They I mean, are. Geez. They're scary. They got that long beak. <laughs> Dude, they're no joke too. I'm like, no, I'm not messing yeah. with that. What's the uh, what's like the the holy grail around here? Like, what's the thing that you you want to catch that you're shocked when you catch or bobcat for me? Okay, yeah, I've caught two. Um, in Leesburg, actually, on a little 20-acre yeah. property. Um, you know, uh, I haven't caught one since, so they're really on my mind. Um, you know, coyote's always cool. I've never caught a gray fox. We don't have the population up here. Um, they're everywhere in southern VA, so I need to get back down there and try to get one. But, yeah, I would say for me, bobcat. And then probably one of my favorite animals to trap, though, is beaver. I love going after. Really? Yeah. It's, Why is that? Just hard it's, or it's, challenging? What? Uh it's challenging if you screw up the first time. So they're dumb until like if you like say you set the trap and you don't set it properly or, you know, 
they swim through the body grip with a twig and set it off and they don't get caught. As soon as they know like they're being trapped, they go ghost. They'll pack your traps with mud. They'll sink them in the bottom of the river. <laughs> okay. Like you get on some of the trapping forums and you'll hear some of the, the, the guys talk about like ghost beavers and stuff and they wind up like having to snare them or shoot them because they're just impossible to catch. That's crazy. But That's they're, crazy. I think it's just because it's – Water trapping is just fun because you're just like it's freezing cold, but you're in the you're in the water and you're you're learning like where they swim, and then you got like the whole, you know, the dam and the tunnels and everything. It's just fascinating, like how they build the dam. Yeah, those things are pretty. The, the intricate, whole nine. Man. So it's just you know water trapping. I really started getting into that last year. Yeah. And um, yeah, but beaver beaver, it's it's awesome, and I feel like that's kind of like the. Um, not like the pinnacle, but that's where trapping was really, you know, I mean, beaver pelts were like currency at absolutely. one point, you know? Yeah. So it's like, that's what this country was kind of built on yeah, was absolutely. trading beaver pelts, you yep. know? So like when you go back there and you're in the woods and you're setting trap for beaver, like you feel like some sort of like mountain frontiers, man, you know, absolutely. you're like, I'm back here trapping beaver, yeah. you know? So back it's just, yeah yeah, 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 you know? So it's kind of cool, you know? Yeah. And it's an awesome creature, you know? They're just... They're brilliant creatures. They are. So. They're very damaging when it comes to. And they are, yeah. Especially like pond, like duck ponds. If you're trying to do impoundments on duck ponds, yeah, and stuff, yeah. Oh, they're yeah. terrible, terrible flood but, flood fields and the whole nine. But but every animal has its place. Just you know, sure. not flooding corn and hay fields and duck ponds, right? <laughs> <laughs> the um the coyotes around here, yeah. So I hear a lot a lot of things about the coyotes. Yep. Um, because they're they're here now. I mean, maybe not a ton, but they're here. We've seen yep. a couple. Yep. I see them on the roadside some days, Dad. Um, yep. And they talk about that they're not regular coyotes. Oh, these hybrid introduced. Yeah. Blah blah blah. Yeah. So, what's your take on all those these coyote oh, stories? Oh man, if there's any trappers watching this, it's going to start World War Three because there's a lot of guy. I don't know. There's two sides of the fence, right? There's people who are like, no, it's a coyote. You know, they have the coy wolf thing going on, like oh, right. they bred with wolves. I've read a bunch of articles and stuff, and I'm no scientist, but, like, my personal opinion, there, there's a viral photo, and a guy caught a coyote, and he caught a wolf, and he hung him from the same tree. If you see the size difference in those, and there's clips yeah. of, like, wolves running down coyotes and killing them. Oh, yeah. Wolves hate coyotes like coyotes hate foxes. Like, it's, it's, they, it's, it's a challenge for them because they're going after the same food. It's a territorial thing. I just don't see, like, a wolf looking at a coyote and being like, oh, yeah, let's be friends. You know, I just – so I think the koi wolf thing, I don't know. It's hard for me to swallow that. I think, I think there are big coyotes. You know, I've caught, like, a 45-pound coyote. But, like, if you post a picture of a 40-pound coyote, everyone's like – is that 80 pounds? Like people automatically <laughs> think that you've caught like this werewolf and yeah. you're like, chill out. Like it's 35, 40 right. pounds, you know? So, well, isn't there some stories about state funding programs? Yeah. With the DNA and, and all that. All yeah. That jazz, and that's where these coyotes are coming yeah, from. Yeah, and, and there might be, but it's kind of like, they're going to kill your babies. And well, yeah, hold yeah. on now. If you, uh, and this is where I, not the killing baby part, but uh, <laughs> before that, um, like DC, there's a there's a big push in DC to actually repopulate or to populate this area downtown with coyotes. Coyotes, really? And they have a big thing. They have that. like a, a yeah. I'm 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 not downtown? joking. Where, yeah. where they want them to take out like the rats or something, like, or what's the deal? So they, it's a big study. It's it's like if you see a if you have a sighting of. Uh, a coyote in DC in this particular area, you're supposed to report it and they give you like 25 bucks or something. Really? It's, it's, it's crazy. And they're, they're introducing them. I know to, they're in the cities and they frequently, you know, they, they go into the, the yeah. cities quite a bit, you know, just cause they can survive off anything. Oh, and yeah. They love, they're omnivorous. That's they, for sure. They love, man. They, they love cats. So yeah. <laughs> that's, that's terrible. Florida's really, really big on that kind of stuff. So like, for example, like, uh, Peacock bass introduced oh, yeah. by the state mm. to kill the cichlids. Yep. Um, Terrible decision. <laughs> no, it's working. They're I know. Oh, they're okay. They're right, protected. Yeah. You can't even keep them. Oh, that sucks. They're, the canals, they put them in the yeah. canals. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, no, they're not growing fast at all. Um, and then the grass carp yeah. are introduced to eat the grass, and they're protected. You can't touch them either. Yeah, yeah, I knew about so, that. So, yeah, their numbers haven't really grown. They, they've kind of done something. But, I mean, it usually never works. Usually it just makes everything yeah. worse. And I can tell you, the coyotes in, like, I hunt in Kansas and Missouri. I mean, I've, I've been sitting in the tree stand before and watched coyotes. I mean, a monster buck coming out, and you're like, all right, you know, it's just about dusk. You know, it's, right. at, it's at that limit right where you could still shoot legally. 
And so you're sitting there, and then the coyotes come out, and they yeah. start chasing your, you know, chasing your deer, and you're like, "Jeez, you know." <laughs> Kansas is like coyote mecca. Oh, I, I watched. Uh, there's a really good uh, YouTube channel called The Management Advantage, and this guy goes to Kansas, and I think. I want to say he was there like a week or two, but the man probably caught more coyotes in two weeks than I have my entire like trapping career. Like, what was the name of that? The Management Advantage. Um, I'll have to find that. Yeah, it, fine. He, he does here, a lot so. of like really good. I, I I watched him because his video content was so good, like how to set a trap, how to make a dirt hole set, like the whole nine. But he did a really cool – his footage and everything is is really good. But, yeah, he did the same. He went out to Kansas and trapped, there. and it's, it's just like – It's so bad, It's man. ridiculous. I mean, so. and you'll see him on the side of the road. And yeah. they have a they have a bounty program out there. I can't remember what it was. I don't know if they have it this year, but they've had it in the past. And I mean, you know, these farmers are like, you know, when we go out there, like if you see a coyote, and they're big about coyotes and armadillos, and and most of them are cattle farmers. And the reason oh, why okay. is because the, you know the armadillos dig the holes and the coyotes eat the calves. You know, and so. It's it's a rough deal, but God, I mean, they're everywhere. I'd and, love to trap Kansas. So if you go whitetail hunting and you run into a farmer out there, I would literally take two weeks vacation and live out of a trailer to trap Kansas. So <laughs> let me know. Like, we should talk. We can figure that out. That's not hard. So uh, we got a lot of we, – we hunt and have a lot of property there to, to hunt lease all right. and yeah. all of that stuff. I'd so, love yeah. to trap in Kansas. That's cool. like – that's a bucket list for right? sure. We can make that happen. Cool. It's easy enough. Well, what kind of customers do you normally have? Is it normally people, businesses? So, yeah, you know, it's it's <laughs> golf courses. Like you would bring that up. Yeah, so, um, yeah. you know, it's um, it, it is people, you know, and the majority of it is is people. You know, I've really only ever had three um, commercial customers. One was like a, a, a daycare. Um, the place had been abandoned for like forever. They started doing construction on it and groundhogs had just taken over. Really? Um, so I had to take, take them out. Um, and then... Yes, I did a golf course, a local golf course. I helped them out and currently trapping another local golf course in the area. Um, How's that it, go for you? It's going. <laughs> it's, it's going. Thank you. Yeah, if you follow my Instagram at all, you know that there have been uh, some challenges uh, right. surrounding that golf course. So, um, you know, it is what it is. It comes with the territory. And I think a lot of it is just uh, – it's been good, though. It's been good for me. Like, you know, a lot of people thought it would be, like, a negative. So, yeah, I mean, if you want, I can go into it. It's so, on you, Yeah, yeah, so I'm happy to. Whatever you'd like to. I mean, you've got tough skin to do this to begin with. No, man. that's I mean, fine. So, yeah, so I'm trapping a golf course. Um, they have multiple issues with, with different species. You know, um, there's fox that are um, – tearing up the greens, digging for, for grubs and stuff, usually just young fox. And then, you know, you got raccoons, they'll get into the trash and spread it all over the course and just doesn't look good. And it's, it wreaks havoc on the groundskeepers and, and, and the greens. And it costs them thousands of dollars. They, they have to repair these things, you know? So they called me in and, um, you know, I, I, I trapped some fox for them. And then, um, you know, I, uh, I got a, I, I went, in the morning and I checked one of my traps and there was a, a note laying there and it said, I have your trap. And there was a phone number. And I was like, okay, I know what happened here. Right. So sure enough, I had caught the guy's dog. Um, dogs now, aren't allowed on the golf course. It's, it's, right, well, it, hold on. I'm going to ask a question real quick. Sure. You caught the guy's dog. Was there damage done to this guy's dog? No, there okay. wasn't. That's what, all. That, what kind of dog? I don't know. Uh, okay. Because I didn't call him. I called the warden and <laughs> said, smart this man. guy has my trap. I caught his dog. Can you go get my trap back? And thankfully, this guy, actually, he um, he said he used to hunt and trap. So he knew how to get his dog Released out of the tree, the press the levers, yep. you know. Um, I was worried at first because um, there was some blood, like, on a nearby rock. And I, I, I caught a dog down in southern Virginia, and these people were – they did not know what they were doing, and they were constantly just yanking on their dog, trying to get it out of the trap, and that That's can that can it. cause severe damage. Right. So, ne needless to say, they came after me on that one. But um, that's a story for another time. Um, but yeah, so there's a. Uh, yeah, thankfully, you know, he got his dog out and everything was and cool. No damage, no nothing. No, no damage, right, cool. no nothing. So, and and you know, the warden went over and talked to him, and everything was cool. The guy thought he was on. He thought he was on HOA property. He wasn't. He was on golf course property. I have Onyx maps, so I know where the property boundaries are. I always set well within that just in case. Yep. I love Onyx. Um, yeah, I love that thing. And and I drop pins where all my traps are at and everything. But so the warden went and got my trap. He's actually showing up tomorrow with it. So I'll get that one back. Um, but uh, last night, 
I was going to go to bed early. I was in bed at like <laughs> 9, 9.30, and uh, phone goes off at like 9.30. And I'm like, Richmond, who's calling me from Richmond this late at night? So I let it go to voicemail. Of course, I do what everybody does, right? Google it. Yeah. And all of a sudden, DWR just pops oh. up all over Google. Yep. And I'm like, I know what this is about. So I called it back, and it was a 24-7, like, dispatcher line for DWR and told them who I was. And they're like, yep. So they got me over to the warden, uh, conservation officer, I guess you could call him. And uh, he was a really nice guy. Do they go by conservation officer? I believe they do now. I don't know. I, I always call him the warden, but I think yeah, it's it's I conservation. Call them yeah, I think it's I think it's technically isn't it like CPO, conservation police officer. Yeah, like, they're legit, like, yeah. police officers yeah, yeah. now. They're yeah. sworn in. Yeah, they are. Yeah. So technically, so I talked to the CPO, really nice guy, great guy. And, you know, we went through the whole thing. I sent him my permit. So he knew it was a nuisance permit and it was valid in the whole nine yards. And this and is all last night. This was last night. Yeah. So he's like, yep, you're good to go. He was like, somebody got caught. I mean, their dog got caught. They called, they called animal control. They called the, the Loudoun County Sheriff's Office. So they were all out there. They got the dog out of the trap and they have your traps and everything. And I said, okay, you know, so they took, you know, they took my traps and, um, but it was, it was good, you know, and I, I met the animal control um, officers today and they gave me my traps back. And, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, negative publicity, this and that, you know, I think if you build relationships with the people around you, like it, it's solid. And this really helped me because now both CPOs and loud know who I am. They know I'm legit. They know I have my permit. Right. I met with the animal control officers, which they get calls about wildlife all the time. So that just helps me. They know who I am. They know I'm legit. And the property manager obviously makes him feel at ease. He knows this guy's licensed. He has insurance, this, that, and the yep. other. So it really worked out, you yep. know. And, um, you know, I do feel bad for the people like dog, but it's posted everywhere. Don't walk your dog on the course. It's on the website. They're technically trespassing, you know. And right. to the letter of the law, you could press – charges if you right. wanted to as a trapper and and the uh the, the golf course but yeah but that's I, not, I, I don't I, mean, that's I don't, don't yeah. you don't need to make enemies <laughs> any more that, than that's you right. Got, right and you know when when the guy you know the first guy when he got caught and he left me a note with his phone number you know I had a lot of people like oh burn his rear end you know get him and I was like if I ding somebody's car door in the parking lot and I yeah. leave them a note with my phone number yeah it's the same thing like if he was walking at night and he has multiple dogs like I can't expect him to like sit there and wait for me to show up right and, four or five a.m. you know right he did the right thing absolutely same thing with these people like yeah my traps were taken but they called who they thought was in you know control of the situation and i got my traps back so gotcha you know no harm no foul as far as i'm concerned <laughs> just yeah. a little bit of a headache yeah it, it is what it is you know they they i it, it comes with the territory that's right like you said yeah. you know yeah. it just it's gonna come with it that's and, right um so i i I, I had a another question. Mark's over there. He he's got no. It just at the no. Go ahead. It, it depends on who they work for, what uh, they're called. So because uh, it okay. could be the Department of Natural Resource, it could be the Marine Police because they do a lot more than oh, just yeah. that. Yeah, okay. And there's all In these Florida, we call them the Grouper Troopers. The different uh, ones. So oh, yeah. yeah, it's looking like probably something to the extent of uh, what was the title? I just found it. It was. Natural resources police officer. Uh, so okay. you know what you you said that you're going to meet up with one of them, right? Yep. Um, and he's going to return your trap to yep. you. Would you mind asking him? And then we'll we'll clarify. Yeah, and, for and, sure. And yeah, I'll talk to him tomorrow. Together, yeah, so. I'll ask him. Yeah. We'll leave names out of it, obviously. But, I, uh, and then when they introduced themselves to me on the phone, it was officer. Yeah. So and so. Oh, yeah, so yeah, I yeah. think there is definitely you know officer in there, but I'll I'll clear it up for us. That'd be cool. That'd be <laughs> good. I also was under the belief too that there was different things. So like. You'd have a county, and a county would have a warden. Yeah. And then the uh, Department of okay. Natural Resources would have officers. Uh, something to do with that, too. I'll have to look it up and see how the breakdown is. I think there was a little bit of structure to it. I got you. Uh, okay. Of what you are that makes sense. Stuff like that, so. All right. So I had, a, I had another question. Yeah. All right. So, or unless you. you yeah. No, I was just looking that up when you guys All brought right. that up. So because it's nuisance trap, you can't keep them. That's right. But have. Have you looked at, you know, approaching, you know, DWR and saying, hey, you know, like uh, they have hunters for the hungry and things like that. Yeah. Um, have you worked or have you tried to reach out to them about that and saying, hey, look, you know, this is a natural resource and we can do something with it. You know, anything like that or no? No. Just not in your wheelhouse. No, not in my wheelhouse. You know, I, I think, you know, along the lines, if it's if it's if it's a oh, poison yeah, ivy, fleas, yeah, ticks, yeah. they don't have a good pelt. They're pretty much unfortunately worthless. Okay. That makes sense. So I think that's kind of how it goes, you know? Yeah. 
I always wonder. Yeah, you know, it's, yeah. It's I mean, it's, areas, it is a but shame, I, but you again, know, this is me learning. You know, I right? Know yeah, that, and you know. I, I wish there is something you could do, but like I said, it's 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 bury, burn, or take it to the landfill. So okay, you well, know. what are you smiling about, Mark? You got something? <laughs> <It's just> something. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, Peter just said something really funny. I don't know if anybody noticed. He said, um, <laughs> "If you catch an otter DNR, <laughs> if you catch an otter on accident DNR, pick up the otter and put it in a museum." And I was like, <laughs> "What do they do? They got a dead otter museum?" No, I think they <laughs> study them. But I mean, I know like why do they send them to? They send them to UVA and all that. Yeah, I know, they, but they, they study when he said museum, my mind just thought like you yeah. walk in a room and there's a bunch of like, like dead, dead otters, otters around from the wall. No. Oh, it was really interesting. Like museum. if you go to like a park or something, then they have like a little nature display. I think they yeah. might like get a taxidermy and throw it up there so kids can know what an otter looks like yeah, because. Honestly, that's one of the biggest things of trapping to me is being able to see critters up close that you would never see, really. Yeah, that was the draw to Cabela's. And you, I mean, you've been to yeah. Cabela's. Oh, and yeah. You, you I took my daughter the... there the other day, and she saw, like, all the animals and, and stuff. And and... I was getting to it. And then when you walk into here, I mean. Yeah, of course. There's, yeah, I saw... there's an ibex over there. There's yeah, an elk. That's... There's, yeah. a, you know, a sika deer. There's all kinds of stuff in there. Yeah, there's yeah. all kinds of stuff on the wall. So. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, I get that. All I shot that. locally. Yeah, so you say. Even the elk. <laughs> so you said. <laughs> oh, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, they hey, they did repopulate. That's true. Um, yeah, if it wanders it. outside of the three counties, it's fair game, right? That'd be really, really cool. Yeah, if we got out back around here, that'd be really, really neat. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that'll ever happen in uh, our lifetimes. So. No, I don't think so. I think it's, it's to reestablish something like that. <laughs> right, it would be just ridiculous. Yeah. Um, you know, so we talk about damage permits and damage stuff like that. I yep. know that a lot of with. Uh, like the deer hunt and everything, it was to protect crops and things right. of that nature. And I assume the first things that come to mind with predators are livestock, especially yep. like people with chickens yep. and things of that nature. Yep. And you talked a little bit about, you know, groundhogs doing damage, but taking like the groundhogs out of the perspective. Yeah. Is there any other kind of damages that they're doing that would that we wouldn't th- think of like outside the box that you go out there and trap for? Um, You know... An attic and destroying a building or a groundhog tunneling under, you know, a foundation or something. So it's it's pretty much damage control, if you if you will, on all accounts, whether it be protecting livestock and poultry or just you know the the grounds. You know, well, it's like our neighbor. Uh, we've been shooting groundhogs over there because they have a hanger and it's it's older, mm. so it's not like a uh, like a reinforced concrete floor. It's not like rebar. Never, it's just poured concrete. Right. And the groundhogs have gone under and dug out. Yeah. And now there's a little. Parts of it are falling through. Right. Yep. So, you know, it, first people think, oh, you're shooting because they're just putting holes in the yard or whatever. Well, no, it's so much more than that. I mean, they right. can be, you know, damaging to a lot of structure stuff yeah. I wasn't even aware of, uh, those kind of things like that. Yeah, it's it's really interesting. And I think that we touched on a lot of what I wanted to talk about today, which was really the idea that everybody just, like, you, like we talked about, just assumes it's just this catch everything, kill everything. Murder everything. Murder yeah, everything. It's... They're suffering the whole time. And... I had learned, you know, years ago that it wasn't quite like that. You know yeah. what I mean? Of course, there's there, there's an angle to it. You know, it's not probably, they're not happy being stuck in a trap, I'm sure. <laughs> no, they're not. But they're not stuck in these crazy, too terrible, you know, uh, what's that? I mean, Saul. You know, it's not like <laughs> right, that. Right, right, yeah. You know? yeah. So I, I think that that's the biggest misconception we have. And I think, too, the problem you have is that there's very few people you can talk about trapping That's with. right. I mean, in my life, I think, and even, even having this store, and dealing with a lot of hunters and a lot of people. I mean, you're probably the only real true trapper that comes in here and talks about trapping and is, is actively trapping. Now, there's the guys who get into it, do it a little bit. It's, it's, I assume it's, it seems so much more difficult than I think the people think it is. Oh, so God, they, I can only imagine. You know, so, they get out of it quickly. So, I mean, there's not a lot of guys that do it. And then I assume, too, you know, and it's like the, the way the world is, you know, there's less land to hunt in. There's less land to do anything in. Yeah. And anytime you ask somebody, you, you run that risk of, you know, there's all oh, your crowd. Oh, don't, don't kill my poor deer. I can't even imagine with the stigma of trapping. <laughs> if you were going to go, oh, I go trap in your yard. They're going to, like you said, think of these terrible images again. So it's got to be difficult for anybody to find a place to even do it unless you're doing a job for someone. Yeah. I, you know, it's it's funny. I, I think. A lot of it, and I'll call them, like, respectfully, old-timers, right, who have been doing it 20, 30 years that, that, you know, just they know so much. I think 
you know, some people are very outspoken about it and, and others, you know, they don't really want to say much because maybe they've run into headaches. They've had people steal their traps. They've, they've gotten the negative publicity. And so they're like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm tired of that. I don't want to deal with it anymore. Um, you know, you, you see it all the time on Facebook where, you know, guys will post up a catch and people will be like, oh, why are you posting that? You're giving the antis fuel. And I'm like, the antis have all the fuel they need, man. Yeah. You know, like, you know, they could go out and learn how to trap themselves and take terrible pictures if they wanted to. Like, they don't need my pictures, you know, to or, 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 or my DIY videos on how to trap or whatever or anybody else's to, to prove their point, you right. know. So I think that's a reason a lot of people don't talk about it because there is this stigma. It's like, oh, you're a trapper. You're out there. You just love to kill animals, you know. Um, so I – and I think, honestly, as trappers, we need to do a better job of that, right? Like, we need to, you know – we need to portray ourselves professionally. You know, we need to we need to educate the general public on it. You know, there uh, it boils down to lack of education. You know, on on many topics when it comes to trapping, people don't do it anymore, so it's not taught. So people don't know. So then they just see one picture pop up, and all of a sudden, everything that they know about trapping boils down to one or two well placed photos from you know, an anti-trapping or anti-hunting organization, yep. you know? So I think it, we almost need to go on the offensive as trappers and be like, hey, look, we're, we're out here. We're normal guys working normal nine to five jobs. We have families, we have dogs and cats and animals and farms, and we love animals. But at the same time, we appreciate conservation. We appreciate the renewable resource and the skill that it takes to do this trade. Like yeah. it is not, you know, it's not rocket science, but it's not easy either, you know? And if it was, everyone would probably be doing it. But I say all the time, like you'll meet a hunter who fishes and you'll meet a, a, a fisherman who hunts. But if you're a trapper, yeah. you do all three. Yep. And Absolutely. so I feel like that's kind of like the uh, the trifecta of like conservation and just like woodsmanship is is trapping, in my opinion. And I don't say that to say that we're better than anybody else. It's I just it. we're out in the woods like actively. We're getting a coyote, one of the smartest animals in the world, to step on like a two-inch circle, yeah. you know? Like if you can do that, you're yeah. doing something. That's impressive. You know? Sure. So I think that's kind of where, you know. So I guess, uh, you know, where do you see this from a – so let me kind of give you a little bit of info backstory. Sure. So Mark and I are pretty big about, you know, when we end our podcast, we always talk about, hey, you know, don't go take a kid fishing, go take a kid hunting, you know. Um, and there's there's a lot to that. And, and you know, you've mentioned going on the offensive and saying, hey, look, yep. you know, this is what we do. This is our business. This is how we do it. Um, and, and this is why we do it from a conservation effort. That's the way you got to go about it. Yep. Um, and, and so where's the future in trapping? You know, it, it's it, like you've said, it's, it's, yeah. it's dwindling. It's a, you know, it, I, I don't like saying the word, but it's the best way I can think of it. It's almost like a dying breed. It you is. Know? Yeah. But it, where's it going? You know, we can't, we can't not have trappers and right. you go to Alaska, you see them all over the place. Right. Yeah. So I, I think it's one of those things where we need to take people under our wing, you know? So there's a, there's a, um, a teenager who lives up the street from me and, um, like we got to talking one day and he was like, you trap, right? And I was like, yeah. I was like, do you want to come? He goes, yeah. So I had him come out and in, in, in my yard and we, you know, we just, I showed him how to set the trap. I showed him how to do everything. Um, <clears throat> and he rode with me, you know, last season and he had a blast. He absolutely loved it. And he went out and bought his own traps and his own bait and lure. And now he's all ready for trapping season. He, and he can't wait to be out of school so he can come ride with me, you know? Um, and I have, you know, I have two daughters. My, my oldest is about to turn three. She's been riding with me since she was like one. Awesome. And I bundled her up in her, you know, her little snowsuit and like, we're going to check traps. And so for two hours in the morning in the side by side, she's riding with me and we're checking traps. And so I think it's one of those things you need to start them. You need to start them young and give them a very positive image of it. Sure. You need to recruit the younger people who maybe aren't trapping, but are, are interested. Um, you know, it's really just about putting it out there in a in a professional, I guess, humane manner, you sure. know. So, you know, I think that's where the future of, of trapping is. It's definitely it's 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 dwindling. You know, we had a um we had a, a trapper meetup for our district. Our district is District Five of Virginia, and we are the biggest district in Virginia as far as like counties and everything. Sure. I think there's like <clears throat> excuse me. 
um, and my president is probably going to like correct me on this, but I think we have like 48 or 50 active members or something like uh-huh. that. We had like a picnic for like the, you know, just like a, a trapper get together, bring your families, bring a dish, hang out, swap sure. stories, all that. You know, there's, there, there might've been 10 of us there, you gotcha. know? So it's one of those things where trapping can be a very solo pursuit, yeah. but we almost need to abandon that. You know, yep. you got deer camp where everybody goes to deer camp and you might be sitting in the deer stand by yourself, yep. but you come back to the cabin and you're, you're eating and you're grilling and you're sitting around the campfire. Yep. I don't know of one person that has trapping camp. You don't hear about that. Like, let's no. go to trapping camp. People would be like, what? You know, yep. but like, you know, that, that bond or like fishing, you can fit two or three dudes in a boat or like on a bank and sit there and swap stories and fish right. and trapping. Yeah, you really not so, much. not so much. So I think it's one of those things where it's kind of a solo art and it can be difficult to take somebody along. Um, and we need to, we, we need to move past that, you know, gotcha. like who cares? You didn't catch 50 coyotes. Maybe you caught 10, but you brought three kids. Yeah. Let's do that yeah, instead. Absolutely. You know? So I think that's kind of where we need to go with it. Yeah. And I, I know another guy, he actually, he's a phenomenal deer hunter. He's a phenomenal turkey hunter. I, He's out in our our camp out in Kansas, and uh, he um, older guy used to be a teacher, you know, taught shop the whole nine yards. He's got stories for days, but he's um, he's a nuisance trapper for um, Eglin Air Force Base. Oh wow, okay. And I mean, the stories that guy comes oh, up bet. with, what he comes. I mean, that. But what's funny is, so they he you know he's got a little area that he traps and all stuff, and then, but they also release all the venomous snakes in mm. Florida that get caught. They release them there, and I'm like, right. you, no, yeah, there's, no, yeah. I'm not, I, I'm not doing that, yeah, you know. But um, the stories that guy can tell, it's just amazing. Oh, and, I bet. And uh, he, he's he's such a neat guy, but uh, and he's got another, you know, a bunch of other folks kind of involved in and in, uh, from an education perspective. And he's got a great education background, so um, you know, I'd love for you to be able to talk to him. Yeah, I, I would like to. I would guy. like to so, meet him. Yeah, so uh, we'll make that happen too. So. So we're we're running low on time. I wanted to talk about one other thing, but before we get to that, um, and our video went out. By the way, we got audio, but our video went oh, out. Oh, nobody can see us. No, you can't oh, see us. Right. Well, I know his is off. I thought mine was still on. Yeah, no, none of them were working. <sighs> okay, great. So, um, <laughs> well, I want to talk about something really quick, sure, because um, we're running out of time. So, really quick before we get to that, you have an Instagram page, you have a Facebook do. page. Yep. People get in contact. They want to do that. How, how would they do that? Yeah. So it's uh, just. Hunt underscore country underscore wildlife. Um, all my information is on there. Um, we'll put it on the on the comments. Yeah, that's probably the best well, way. So. A lot of people um, reach out to me because people refer just my name on Facebook. So, I mean, people can find me on Facebook and send me a message there, too. I think my phone number is on the Instagram page and the Facebook page. So, I mean, you know, you got critter problems. I'm your guy. Give me a call. You know, <laughs> like I'm it. there. Okay, well, that's perfect. Well, I want to talk to you about something really quick. Um, it kind of goes in topic with what we're talking about, sure. well, more what the podcast talks about. So let's talk about sneakhead fish. Yes. I heard is about it, this. Is it or is it not the most delicious fish ever? I, I love it. It's yeah. so great, right? I, I haven't been yet this year. Um, unfortunately, I've just been trapping too much, but it's delicious. Like, I, I, I tell people it's kind of like, I don't know. I say it's a cross between a salmon and a tilapia because it's white like the tilapia, but, but it it's meaty denseness. like the salmon. Oh, it's like, so, good. so I love I love snakehead. I always tell people it's, it's it reminds me of like yeah. cod and kind of like striped bass because it's thick but it's still flaky. But it's it's just so good. It's yeah, it's, so it's delicious. You, yeah. And you can cook it whatever you want. It's so dense. Yeah, yeah. It's it's so good because no, it's the best. He doesn't believe me. He thinks I'm lying. They, they look, I don't think you're lying. They look ugly, and they're slimy, and they're mean with their teeth and everything when they come out. But when they're in the frying pan, bro, they are delicious. Well, they're just huge chunks of meat. You know, I think what's really delicious, I love catfish. I think yeah. catfish tastes delicious. Trash can. That one right there? No. Talk not at all. Double bag stuff for the not trash. Not at all. So, mm-hmm. obviously, we have a, a, a variety of – or a, a very vast right. difference in well, the Well, it was like we, we eat, were talking right? about the day, and you were like, my favorite uh, – we were talking about tuna, and you were like, I don't want tuna. I eat bluefish because bluefish are great. I don't and eat bluefish. They're disgusting. I wouldn't eat a bluefish either. I don't eat bluefish. And you said you eat largemouth bass. I have eaten there you go. bass. Now people are going to – In the past. Comments. People are like going to talk about you nonstop. Oh, yeah. I have eaten them because I grew up dirt poor and I was hungry. Yeah. So, 
I, I've had bass difference. before. I didn't. It's I gross. didn't. Yeah, yeah. I'm not a big fan. Not my fan. But, but snakehead, yeah, oh, it, snakehead it's so legit. Good. It is. All right. Oh. So how big was the one that you got mounted? That we saw pictures of. Oh man, what was that thing? It was it's like ten-ish pounds. 29, 30 inches long. It was it was yeah. the biggest. So did you catch it on a line or did you catch your bowfish? Oh, uh, no, on a line, yeah. We actually, it's funny, we tried a new spot and uh, we didn't get a bite all day. And I was right. just, I had got this new frog and I was just throwing it back in like the shallowest grassy just as a prayer. Right. And that thing hit it like right at sunset. And uh, like when it hit, I knew. I was like, this is a, this is a good fish. Really? And, and got him in the boat. And uh, yeah, I, so I, I don't want to give it away, but it was it around here? Oh yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, yeah, it was I, around I, here. I, um, yeah, like, don't give uh, away your don't give away the no, 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 no. I, I won't. But like the tributaries of the Potomac. Okay, yeah, no, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Down near, you know, everyone goes down to Woodbridge, and there's a bunch of them down there. Yeah, so yeah. that's I was I, I, I was, was thinking like. You know, did you get up here, point of rocks? No, area, no, like we that, so. we were in our kayaks, way you know, we get in the tributary, and then we just push back as far as we possibly you gotcha. know, can without needing a weed whacker. Yeah, so. I got you. Yeah, that is some <laughs> of the best fishing in the, the Potomac when you get into the marshes. Yeah. Dude, you, I, we went out, so um, we went bow fishing with uh, Ramrod, right? Oh, okay. Uh, if you don't know him, Travis is. You got to go. I mean, well, you, that I've is. never been. I saw your video, though. I've always wanted to try it. My buddy does Dude. it. Well, he used to have a boat, and I kept trying to go, and every time he would invite me, yeah. like, I couldn't go, and then it was, like, game over, and I've never been, so. So it's hard. It's fun. Yeah. It's awesome. I'm totally addicted. That's awesome. But when we went out, my wife and I went out with Travis because that one over there, she caught COVID, and they couldn't go with us, so we went. <laughs> and then um, so we went out, and – there were fish for days. Really? I mean, just, it was like, I mean, you look down and it's like everywhere. Everywhere. That's cool. Um, now we didn't see, we saw a couple of small, small, small snakeheads, um, but most of them are all cats. So, um, but then we went again with him and, and I kept trying to explain it to him. And we were down, what's that river? Uh, Rappahannock. Rappahannock. Oh, okay. And he didn't understand it until we got there. And it was the same way. Just right. thousands. And I mean, just everywhere. Wow. So there was, Snakehead? No, no, no. no, no. no. Oh, These were just cats oh, and oh, carp. Cats, and cats and carp yeah. Oh, I wish it was. We'd have been sh- yeah, eating yeah, for days. Them up. No, there were just so many catfish. Like, you'd go through the shallows, and you were just waking them up, and they were just swimming really? and you were trying to bow them. Um, and it's just, it's obviously way too many. I mean, the, I, don't, I don't know how the ecosystem even begins yeah, we spent, to be able to take care yeah, of that. I mean, we took out 14 in a gar, and really? I mean, it, it. we didn't even make touch them. We missed hundreds of Hundreds. Oh, of I times, mean, I wouldn't be surprised if you, we saw thousands. Of oh yeah, wow. thousands. I mean, Easy. they were all so, over the place. So, and I'm interested in what the Potomac up here at Point of Rocks looks like. You know, what what yeah. would you what would I'm, you see? I'm, that I've at never night? fished up there. It's, there's like so many rocks and shallows, and I had a John boat, but I didn't feel like learning the river. And I eventually sold the John boat and just went back to the kayak. So, yeah. the biggest, but I've heard it's good. The biggest difference up there, and I have fished up there a little bit, is that it's the water is is rutted. It's yeah, fast. Really yeah. Fast. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So there's no grass. There's no yeah. nothing. It's all yeah, you just probably wrong. wouldn't see a lot of catfish then. Um, I don't think you see like any until you get somewhere where there's still water. Yeah, you get into any the, systems. Yeah. And the only thing I ever caught up there of any substantial this was, was smallmouth. Yeah, there's right. good smallmouth up there. I've heard, but and supposedly there's walleye all over the place around here. I've never seen them. And his father used to talk about catching them. I've, I've never had any luck catching them. But, really? Well, that was like we were up walleye. by here. Anna, Anna. What dam was that? And yeah, that's by Shepherdstown. We were there, and I was fishing, and I caught some smallmouth, decent size pound, pound two yeah. fish, you know. Well, there's musky in there, too. Well, that was the thing. Mm-hmm. Like, we didn't know there were musky in there. And I could see them swimming around, and I didn't know what they were. Mm. And I was like, is that really a musky? And I was talking to everybody from the town. It's like, yeah, they're, they're there. And good luck, I don't buy anything, but they're there. So there's, I mean, there's some really good fishing in that part of it. But as far as, like, the uh, like the snakeheads and the catfish and stuff, they like that Marshy, grassy, yeah, yeah muck. mosquito infested muck, man. Right. Yeah, it's way to go. Yeah, because all the ones we ever caught, so we would catch them like you know, I don't know, ten years ago down home, and we would catch them only in the far up in the marsh, yeah. way way up. And what we would do is we tried to catch for a long time, we couldn't. Right. So what we did was we started just to fish for like bass. We'd be bored. Yeah. You know, I want you to fish for bass, and all of a sudden it was like bass, 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 naked. Yeah. And you're like, and that's when we realized they were doing the same exact activity the bass were. Right. They were sitting on ledges where two streams would meet, yep. and they would just ambush yep. stuff. Yep. And after that, it was like, okay, they're not that complicated. But they were never this fierce yeah. feeding machine that yeah. they make them out to yeah. be. I mean, you'd see them on the top breathing, mm. and you'd throw stuff by them all day long. They wouldn't. I mean, they didn't hit it. They didn't mm. care. So, right. 
All right. Well, we're getting uh, – we're like six minutes over. Look at there. Yeah. Well, I wanted to touch base with that because he, he did have some cool pictures of that. We yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I love it. I love the snakehead fish. I Like I said, this – we bought a and farm in too, April, so. and we've just been busy, so I haven't been down. But but you yeah. got kayaks, too. so Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, let me know if you guys go. I'll, I'll join you, but yeah. I'm a little, a little busy running around right now. <laughs> well, it's, a, it's a pleasure having you on. Hopefully yeah, we, thank uh, you. I appreciate the uh, the opportunity to speak about it, you know. Yeah. We covered yeah. some stuff and informed some people. Uh, yeah. I want to have you back. Um, I'd, I'd like to kind of do a video with, you know, <sighs> Uh, what would be neat is maybe one day we could go out and one of those trap with trap you. lines. That'd, that'd, that'd catch, be great. Yeah, you get an idea of what's going on and show people. You know, I think I mean? that'd be so cool. That'd be yeah. a really neat yeah. idea. Maybe something like that we could work out. Yeah, usually in January is a good time. So yeah. okay, yeah, yeah. for yeah. sure. January I'd love to have you duck out. season. So uh, yeah, you're a waterfowler. <laughs> oh am. man, I am. So <laughs> if I catch me in the split, maybe we'll go there. Okay, so. all right, fair enough. But you got anything to add? Uh just. Uh, I'm good. You here. Anything to add there, Peter? No, right. thank you very much. Appreciate the opportunity. No problem. Anytime. Well, like we would say, um, you know, take kids kids out there hunting, fishing, travel, whatever it is. Yeah, St. Croix. They're the future. Oh, yeah, we are still giving away the St. Croix rod. Yeah, um, when we get to 100. 100. Super easy. I, I replied it to some folks. When we get to 100 subscribers on YouTube, you have to go in and subscribe. Uh, 100 subscribers will give away the victory. Because it's specific to YouTube. We're getting followers everywhere else, but we really yeah. got to get the YouTube numbers up. So that goes through. We will give that right away. We are going to give away frogs. If people ever send us pictures, so we count something yep. on a frog. Um, and then I have, when we're done with the St. Croix one, I have another, coming, another, so. another one really cool. They can't see me because the camera's not on. Uh, really cool giveaway to do. Blame the tech guy. And some other some other stuff there in the future. So the giveaway stuff's not over. Right. It hasn't even begun. Hopefully we can get rolling on that and get yeah. some more of that kind of stuff out there. So um, I appreciate everybody listening today. Hopefully everything went through technically for everybody and heard everything well. Maybe they couldn't view us. But yeah. uh, we'll be on next, uh, next Friday. Next Friday, 7 o'clock. All right. Bye, y'all. crazy, high-tech, or lazy the rest of the country gets, we will always be hunting and fishing. If that's you, you've found your new family. Thanks to our sponsor, Davis Guns and Gear. Thanks for listening to the show. Make sure to like, rate, and review. And we'll be back soon. Reach out to us by email at info at thehuntingquest.com. And check us out on Instagram and YouTube at The Hunting Quest. See you next time.